Welcome back to Dan's On Fandoms, I'm Dan. We got a brand new episode of The Clone Wars released on Friday, which is titled Dangerous Debt, and the theme this week was about as Star Wars as you can get. It was who you were does not define who you are, and it was extremely apt for this episode, so let's dive right in. The episode begins, and Ahsoka, Trace, and Rafa have really gotten themselves into some serious trouble. They are now imprisoned in a fortress on the planet Obadia by the Pikes. The three are again playing the the blame game on one another. Unfortunately though, they have all had a hand in getting themselves into this little pickle and are going to have to work together to get out. Rafa insists that it is not her responsibility if Spice ruins the lives of those that buy it, while Ahsoka thinks that she should feel guilty for playing her part in supplying it. Rafa comments that Ahsoka is a regular Jedi, with her high morals and everything. When Ahsoka asks what if she was, the two sisters get serious, with Trey saying that she shouldn't kid around. Rafa decides to tell Ahsoka about what happened to her and Trace's parents. A couple of years ago, there was a prison break on Coruscant by the gangster Zero the Hutt. The Jedi came to try and help recapture Zero, and as they chased Zero and his gang down the portal, the bounty hunter Cad Bane blasted the engine of a cargo transport, causing it to spin out of control. The Jedi tried to gain control of the ship and had to decide whether to let the ship crash straight ahead into a densely populated landing platform, or steer it into the portal wall. Unknown to the Jedi, however, the other side of the wall was the Martez's home. The Martez's parents saw the transport coming and had enough time to get the sisters out, but they died in the crash. Zero was able to escape, and later, a green-skinned female Jedi with dark robes, Luminara Unduli, came and said that the Jedi had to make a choice, but the Force would be with the sisters. Like, come on, Luminara, seriously? The Jedi did not offer any apologies or assistance to the newly orphaned girls. This made the sisters vow that they would only look out for themselves and they'd build a new life without anyone's help. The story that Rafa is telling is a reference to the season 1 finale which was titled Hostage Crisis. As Rafa finishes up telling the story, she's taken by the Pikes to be tortured to try to find out where the missing spice is. She is stunned multiple times by an 8D series smelter droid. Back in the cell, Trace and Ahsoka discuss that it has always been just Rafa and Trace against everyone else since the day their parents died. That is, until Ahsoka came along. Trey said that she decided to help Ahsoka because it's something her mother would have done. The Pikes then bring Rafa back unconscious and throw her into the cell. Trace is obviously upset and starts yelling at the Pikes while Ahsoka tries to warn her to stop. The Pikes then take Trace with them and leave Ahsoka and Rafa in the cell. As Trace gets to the smelter droid, she pretends to faint and is able to steal a gun off of one of the Pikes. She's then able to fight them off and runs back towards the cell. Ahsoka sees her as she's running past opens the cell door using the force, and she and Rafa chase after Trace. Trace is knocked over after running into a pike, and when she falls in front of a cell with a Weequay and an Ithorian, the Weequay asks her to let them out. As Trace is struggling with the pike, she is able to kick the button to open the door, and the two prisoners help her fight off the assailant. I loved that the Ithorian just lifts the pike and tosses his ass. Rafa and Ahsoka then run into Trace, and the three are able to escape from the fortress. They keep pushing things over to try to cover their tracks, including Ahsoka force pushing many heavy objects. Skrull is getting reckless. They blow up a bunch of crates to buy some more time to escape, but they are now at a bridge that is retracting. Rafa is able to get across easily, then Trace jumps and is only able to make it when Ahsoka uses the force. Rafa obviously hopes that Ahsoka won't make the jump, but our homegirl jumps across easily and actually lands behind Trace and Rafa. At first, they think she's fallen, as they don't see her, and once they realize she's made it, Ahsoka says that she's more athletic than she looks. Rafa quips that that's not normal, so it's only a matter of time before the Martez sisters discover she's a Jedi. If only they had one more episode together. Oh wait. The trio then head down a flight of stairs and are able to get a stun weapon from a guard, as he is crushed by some of the machinery. Rafa is shocked at the amount of effort that the pikes are going through to try to get them. Ahsoka says that that's what happens when you deal with criminals, that they don't want to be embarrassed or let you get one over on them. They then decide to split up to try to escape. 
Ahsoka will try to disable the gate, and the Martez sisters will try to distract the guards. Trace and Rafa get into a shootout while Ahsoka kicks about six Pike's asses and then catches up with the Martez sisters. Ahsoka once again uses the Force to help the sisters take out all of the Pikes they're battling. The three are then able to get into the city and ditch the guards. Trace runs ahead looking for her ship while Rafa and Ahsoka discuss Trace and how she looks up to Rafa. Ahsoka tells Rafa that she doesn't think Trace is cut out for the criminal life, even if Rafa is, and that Trace would never tell her because she believes Rafa has her best interests at heart. But Rafa disagrees and argues that Trace can always opt out of this lifestyle. In the background of this scene, we do spot the two criminals that Trace let out of the Pike prison. They actually spot the trio and run in the other direction. Love that. A godel beggar then comes up to Rafa and asks for her credits, and she very quickly dismisses him, saying she has none and to get out of here. Rafa and Ahsoka continue their conversation, with Rafa asking Ahsoka what's in this for her, and she honestly answers that in her life, if you find people that need help, you help them. Rafa says that she used to know someone like that, referring to her mother of course. We cut back to the Godel beggar, asking a group of pikes for money, and when they turn to face the Godel, we see the pikes have a hologram of Ahsoka, Trace, and Rafa. The Godel recognizes them and barters with them to get money for his information. Trace then spots her ship, the Silver Angel, on a landing platform in the distance and tries to convince the others to go get it. Rafa wants to find the first thing that will run, however. That bastard Godel then leads the pikes right to the trio, and as the trio is running away, we see something I wasn't expecting at all, a cloaked Mandalorian. I love this so much and it makes perfect sense. I wondered how Ahsoka was going to wind up hanging with the Martez sisters and then suddenly on Mandalore during the Siege of Mandalore. Well, now we know. Ah, I got so excited at this part because I knew right away it was Bogatan Cries, who is Duchess Satine's sister and was formerly a part of Death Watch. We then see the trio steal a speeder, but the pikes shoot the engine, and while Ahsoka is able to hang on, Trace and Rafa fall off and are quickly captured by the pikes. We then see Bo-Katan, now with two other Mandalorians, as the one gazes at the Martez sisters and Ahsoka running away. Bo-Katan believes that Ahsoka is the same Jedi that she met on Karlak, but is confused as to why she would be on Obadiah. Bo-Katan is referring to the Season 4 episode, A Friend in Need, where Lux Bonteri and Ahsoka wound up on the planet Karlak with Death Watch. If you've watched Star Wars Rebels, you might recognize the other Mandalorian in this scene, Ursa Wren, the leader of Clan Wren and Sabine Wren's mother. At this time though, we don't know who the third Mandalorian is. Again, this was pretty great as we now have a pathway to bring Ahsoka to the Siege of Mandalore. Ursa Wren then states that she's afraid that Ahsoka might compromise their mission, but Bo-Katan reminds her that they have a common enemy, so she might be of use to them. Meanwhile, Fife and the Pikes bring Trace and Rafa to a private area where they speak with Marg Krim via holoprojector. Marg is pissed that the trio has cost him thousands of dollars. His compatriots state that they should kill them and that they plan on capturing and torturing Ahsoka for the whereabouts of the Spice so they can then dispose of them. Ahsoka commandeers a repulsor craft and interrupts the Martez sisters' execution. She takes down some of the Pikes, shoots a few more, but after she's able to pick up both Trace and Rafa, they are shot down down and then surrounded by more pike guards, and Fife tells them that this was his plan all along. The trio is again captured and brought back to the same cell from earlier. Always the negotiator, Rafa continues to try to get them another chance to complete a new job for Marg Krim. Marg quips that they messed up the first time, why would he ever give them another chance? He does say that they will continue to torture them until the pikes get their spice. Clearly upset, Rafa apologizes to Trace and Ahsoka, admitting that she should have never taken this job. Ahsoka accepts the apology, saying that they live and learn, but Trace wonders for how much longer. And that's where the episode ends. This was a pretty fun episode, even though we ended up right back where we started physically at the beginning, there was some character growth as well as story development. We did have Rafa finally accept some blame for getting into this mess, while at the beginning she wouldn't accept any of it. We also got to see a trio of Mandalorians that will surely help us tie into the Siege of Mandalore, the final arc of the series. I also have to say, I was surprised that Rafa and Trey still haven't found out that Ahsoka was once a Jedi. You know that's going to cause some serious issues for the sisters, so I'm ready to rip that band-aid off and let Ahsoka tell them. But what did you think about the episode? Are you okay? that they physically ended right where they started at the beginning of the episode? And what do you think of the Mandalorians showing up? 
let us know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Follow Dan's On Fandoms on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Tumblr, all at Dan's On Fandoms. Thanks for watching, and stay nerdy.